Hi everyone, welcome back. It's October, I'm feeling the Halloween vibes. So what I have for you today is this Perfusion Peanuts Trick or Treat Palette. Super cute palette. I love the packaging, I love how it feels in my hand. Lots and lots of shades in here and a really huge mirror. I had some good times when I was creating the looks and I had some not so good times when I was creating the looks. So, it's definitely a mix. I have three looks for you guys, so let's get started. Let me show you the looks, including the one that I have on my eyes right now, and I will show you swatches and then give you my final thoughts. Let's get started. There is quite a bit of kickback in the pan, but the shade is going on pretty nicely. The green is looking a little bit lighter on the eye. I wonder if I have the white shade in the brush. So I'm going to switch the brush and see if I get more pigment from the green. It's still like pigmented, but it's just a lighter color. I'm going to spray my brush for the next piece because I'm going to put this actual neon color into my inner corner. I was expecting a lot more pop on the eye, especially since I sprayed the brush, but hmm. I guess that's kind of going to be the theme with this palette. It's not super pigmented. Like yesterday I was using a She Glam palette and there was a shade in there that was way more pigmented than this. Yeah, it's looking pretty much like the green shade that I put in the crease. Here's the one that I'm putting in the, cre in the inner corner and this is the crease shade. I'm moving on to purple. There's these two purple shades here. I'm going to take this one and the darker one. I don't mind shades that are not as pigmented as long as they're buildable. Like the After Hours Colourpop eyeshadow, that... The sh some of the shades were looking like, oh, it's not a lot of pigment, but I was actually able to build it up though. That is so light compared to what you see in the pan. I did watch one review of this palette and they did not like the quality in this palette compared to the quality of prior palettes from Perfusion. So, all right, at least this one's a little more pigmented. That's good. So the darker purple is a little more pigmented. Maybe I'll go like this route with the yellows. That yellow looking shimmer. And maybe we just combine yellow and purple together. Yeah, it looks pretty lustrous. It's not lackluster in any way. It looks soft enough. I'm gonna take one purple shimmer. It looks really dark, so I'm scared, but I'm gonna use that to try to blend together the purple and the yellow. It seems like the matte shade under the shimmer starting to get picked up as I'm trying to apply the shimmer. So that's why I guess it is not buildable because it's so soft, it's not actually clinging onto the skin, so you can't build it up. The purple shimmer doesn't look that good either. I am gonna use this orange shade, but I'm gonna spray my brush. All right, so like you could see the pigment here with a uh, damp brush, which is great. Here is the finished look, and you can kind of see the patchiness here in the outer corner, but the yellow shade looks beautiful. The yellow shimmer shade. I'm gonna go more into like these grungy shades at the bottom. So there's like brighter colorful shades, but there's also like more grungier, darker shades. This cream shade right here. I'm not seeing anything at all happening. <laughs> it's a shade right here in the crease. I'm 
of this navy blue shade here. Like if this was the formula for the entire palette, I would be so happy. Look at that pigment. I'm putting it in the crease. Big shimmer here. Really nice. So no issues with the shimmers except for maybe the purple shimmer. That one was not that good. But the other two shimmers I tried were okay. I'm gonna take this mustard yellow and the one next to it and bring it into the lower lash line. Ooh, that's a pretty mustard shade. There's no like one theme for it. You have like olivey and like mustard type of shades, like more grungy shades, then you have super bright shades. It's just all over. So I wet my brush for the brown shade so I can get more pigment and precision. All right, that looks good. I don't know if I can use any of these uh, for my inner corner. Maybe this orange one right here. Maybe I can use this one for the inner corner. All right, so I finished up the look. I do not like this orange shade here. It looks patchy. It's like the first glitter that I've tried in my life that looks kind of weirdly patchy in between two different shades. So I did go over it a little bit with this shade over here, and this one's really pretty. Do you like the colors in this look? The shades were okay. And then here's another look at the other look. All right, so for my final look, I wanna do something interesting and creative. But I also wanna do something that's leaning more toward like all of the grungy muted tones. So let's start off with this mustard shade right here. Generally, big palettes just overwhelm me, but the good thing about big palettes is the mirror is nice and big, and that makes me feel more comfortable. Then I'm gonna go in with this navy blue shade right here. I'm also gonna bring it out a little bit. Then I'm gonna take this shimmer shade right here. Really nice and smooth. It's not like a glitter, it's more like a nice satiny metallic type of shimmer. Very smooth. Mm. I'm gonna spray my brush and go back in with that navy blue shade. So I completely changed from where I started before. Now I'm gonna try to blend in the matte navy shade with the purple sh metallic satin shade, okay? I do want to emphasize that mustardy shade a little bit more on my eye. And then for this inner part of the eye, I want to use this Really beautiful shimmer right here. So beautiful. So reflective. It's absolutely stunning. Imagine if all the shimmers in this palette or most of the shimmer shimmers in this palette were like this. That would make me so happy. It's so pretty. Now I'm gonna take this green shade right here a line right here. All right, I am loving this more like futuristic, geometric <laughs> look that's happening here and it is exactly how I wanted it. It looks muted. Well, there is a little bit of pop of color here and there. So I'm gonna finish up the other eye. I'm gonna put on some mascara and I'll be back. Oh, and I'm gonna actually do a liner too. All right, here's the finished look. 
I mean, I really like the look itself, how it came out. It looks super interesting. And I wanted to do something interesting and fun, so I like the look. I also did a little bit of a liner here in the inner corner. I struggled so much in the past with creating a liner like this, but this time around it was super easy. I used this new liner by Stila. And I feel like the tip in here is so tiny and it gives me just a lot of control. It's actually two tips. One is a little bit longer, the other one is a little bit thinner and shorter, and the thinnest one, it made it super easy for me to do that liner in the inside of the eye. I like the look. Would I do this look on a normal day? No, but I had a lot of fun creating it. Okay, so here are the swatches. I feel like some of the columns do make sense where the colors go together, but some of them don't. And the purple ones, I feel like there's just not enough variety in the purples, but um, the rest of them look pretty nice. My final thoughts on this palette. It is a really cute palette. I absolutely adore the packaging. I love this sort of clear cover that they have with the little things inside. A lot of options for colors, but for me, it gets a little overwhelming. I'm not a huge fan of big palettes for that sort of overwhelming sense. And I also had trouble trying to find shades that kind of work well with each other. So I feel like if it's a big palette, you really have to try to make it cohesive in some way to make it easier to make those decisions. And I don't know, I, I really struggled with it. They do have some sort of layout with the pinks and the, or, uh, the not the pinks, sorry, the oranges, the greens, the purples, and the sort of pinky reds and then the blues. But in my head, I couldn't really create looks in that way. It just, I couldn't make it work that way. So I did hop around the palette a lot. And as you guys saw, some matte shades were not that good, but some matte shades were totally fine. And I love this shade up here and this shimmer shade here. Those are so sparkly, so lustrous, shiny, soft. They look beautiful. If you have more skill than me, you can probably make this palette work. So it might be worth it to get it just because it's such a cute palette and you do have lots of shades. So you do have a lot of options when it comes to that. This was a fun palette to review, even though I had some not so fun moments. And uh, I don't know if I'll ever really get a good use out of this palette personally. So it might end up on Murakari at some point because it's just too much for me. It's too overwhelming, but I might keep it in my makeup museum too because it is a cool looking palette. If you are interested in getting this palette, I will leave a link down below. It's gonna be an affiliate link, so I will make a small commission and I will appreciate that so much. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, make sure you hit that like button. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. Thank you, bye.